We are here today because of gun violence that has rippled through our community over the last three days. In two days, we've had two homicides in our city. Like cities across the United States, we are seeing an unrelenting surge of gun violence. This violence needs to stop. This is a crisis that's impacting all of us. Today, two families are having to deal with unimaginable realities of losing a loved one. I am devastated for those families, and I offer them my deepest condolences. The gun violence we saw this weekend is completely abnormal for our city. It is very rare for Salt Lake City to have two homicides within two days of each other. This year, we are at 18 total homicides. That includes vehicular homicide cases as well. Despite that alarming number, I want to reassure our community, Salt Lake City is a safe community. The Salt Lake City Police Department is doing everything we can to keep our community safe and prevent violence. Every day we are working closely with the United States Attorney's Office and with our local DA's office to aggressively investigate and prosecute gun violence. Our message couldn't be clearer. If you commit a gun crime, you will be arrested and we will refer your criminal case for prosecution. What happened this weekend is not reflective of where we are headed as a city. While these two homicides are completely unrelated, there is one common theme playing out over and over again. That is conflict. In too many of the shootings we have seen this year, young adults and even juveniles are pulling out their guns and pulling the trigger during arguments that quickly and unnecessarily blow up and create deadly situations. On Friday morning, our officers responded to a business near the intersection of 300 South and 900 East after receiving reports of a shooting. Our officers responded quickly and were on scene and performing CPR within four minutes. I want to acknowledge the bravery of several community members who had heard the gunshots and began rendering first aid to the victim as our officers arrived. The suspect, we are asking that anyone with the information on who he is or his whereabouts to contact our detectives right away. This person is accused of shooting and killing 32-year-old Christopher James Taylor. Based on our investigation, we know there was some sort of argument between Mr. Taylor and the suspect prior to the shooting. I would ask anyone who has information to this case to contact our homicide detectives. They can be reached at 801-799-3000. On our second homicide, early Saturday morning, and here's what we know, at approximately 1 a.m. we received information about a shooting near 900 South and Edison Street. Officers were in the area and responded and found 22-year-old Adelaide Serrano Robles suffering from at least one gunshot wound. Sadly, he died on scene. Our detectives had several leads on this case, but, and they've been running them down relentlessly. But based on the preliminary informa information, we also believe that the prior to the shooting, there was some sort of argument. We are asking that anyone with information on this case to please come forward and contact our detectives. And again, they can be reached at 801-799-3000. Because both these investigations are ongoing, there's not a lot of information that I can give further than this. As our detectives are working these cases and reviewing the video and other evidence, I have a message to these two shooters. Turn yourselves in. Come forward with your attorney, but turn yourselves in. The family and our community needs answers, and our detectives will not relent in their pursuit of justice. I want to thank our patrol officers for their quick response to both of these homicides and for their securing the crime scene and witnesses. Because of the patrol officers, our homicide detectives had numerous leads to chase down during the first several minutes of arriving on scene. I also want to thank and recognize our crime lab technicians who spent several hours on both of these homicide scenes in the bitter cold processing the scenes alongside our homicide detectives. We all have a role in preventing gun violence, and that's why I would urge anyone with information 
on a crime involving a gun to call law enforcement right away. I can take a few questions. Chief, what do you make of the fact that both of these homicides remain unsolved? You mentioned it's rare to have two within two days, but the fact that neither suspect has been taken in yet. Comple or homicide in investigations, sometimes they take some time. Uh, they're complex. There's a lot of, uh, there are witnesses to interview, there's videotape to review, and then there's suspects to chase down, find, and then interview as well. So uh, it doesn't concern me they're not solved. They will be solved. Sometimes it just takes time. Any other details you can provide about either one? Are these chance meetings? Do you think the previous encounters with each other? I don't, I don't have that information right now. Chief, I'd only be speculating, sorry. Sorry to cut you off yeah, over there. Uh, with these homicides, I mean, we've seen, uh, essentially what you said, they've been altercations. Have you seen, uh, I guess, people themselves having trouble just diffuse situations on their own and police are having to step in? I know you guys train on these things, but what does it take for a community member to help get this before there are a lot of police involved and unfortunately now two people are dead? You know, I... I wish I had the answer to that. You know, um, we've seen not only here in Salt Lake City, but across the country, uh, a rise and a spike in gun violence and homicides. Um, conflict, conflict resolution uh, is gone out the window. Uh, people are, are turning to a handgun and then have the fortitude to pull the trigger. Um, that's got to end. We've got to figure out a different way to, to, number one, remove those guns from the problem, and then number two, find a better way to resolve these conflicts. This is a tragedy, and it's having a huge impact in our community. Chief, can you spell the name of that uh, individual who passed away on Saturday morning near South Edison Street? We can get it to you right after this. Yeah. For community members, I and mean, what's important for them to look out for? Obviously, they have the phone number. You know, some people who, um, you know are, might be afraid to call just because of the cases themselves, but what do they need to look out for to help you guys help the community in gun violence? Look, there's no better partner in solving crime and especially violent crime. Please be our ears and eyes. If you see something, say something. Give us a call. But if you're ever in a situation where, where a conflict arises, walk away. Be a good witness, but walk away. Uh, that would really help us. Chief, you say it's not reflective of where the city's headed. Some may say, is this not evidence that the city is heading in, in a direction that's not ideal? Can you speak to that, please? This is just one weekend. And what I would say is last week we sat here in this very same room when we talked about crime trends. Crime is still trending down here in Salt Lake City. But uh, I would be remiss if I didn't stand before you today and tell the community that uh, this is concerning. It's concerning to this police department, and we will, we will find those responsible we will arrest them and we will refer them for prosecution. Uh, again, Salt Lake City is a safe city, but no, this police department is going to keep it that way. Chief, do you have any details on, can you speak about the West High incident this morning? Sure. Uh, what do you know about it and does that add to the level of concern you're talking about? Absolutely. Uh, at 10 a.m. this morning, we started into an, a threats investigation at West High. Officers are on scene right now. The students are safe. Uh, we worked very quickly. Our SROs um, were working with the school administration and the school district. Now, the school district made the determination to lock the school down. Um, we have sent additional officers to the scene. Right now, we have detained two students in, re in, in uh, relation to this, this threat. I can't speak to the type of threat or how it came in, but right now we have two students in custody, and I want to reiterate, the school and the students are safe.